All right, everyone. Welcome to the very end. Thank you for sticking around with us. Uh, this talk is on leveraging SBOMs, automate packaging, transfer, and reporting of dependencies between secure environments. Uh, just some quick introductions. My name is Ian Dunbar Hall. This is Jared Heck. We're members of Lockheed Martin Software Factory. Um, if you look at what we do, we are the organization within the company that owns the DevSecOps um, experience. So we do a lot of internal tooling, and then we own the integration between container registries, package repositories, and other things. So keep an open mind. I think the premise of this talk really revolves around one concept. Um, you know, we hear a lot about SBOMs over the, over the week. Um, and we're often talking about it as a build artifact. It's something that you may do through analysis with Trivi or Sift or something else. And it's used for compliance or tracking. I'm going to ask you to just think about it slightly differently. Think of it as a packaging definition. So we have this kind of uh, agnostic packaging format that allows you to specify a Perl. And that Perl could be of many different types. So when we talk about how to package something and move it between uh, different environments, it's really nice because it doesn't necessarily tie you to one specific package format. Not necessarily, you know, say a requirements a text file with Python or a Maven Gradle file for something uh, in the Java realm. So what is our problem? Well, uh, just a show of hands here, who here has worked on a classified or other secure environment? Yeah, okay, this is why you're at this talk. <laughs> um, so number one, it sucks being a developer in a disconnected, strict environment, right? Uh, when I say a strict environment, I'm talking specifically classified or some sort of air-gapped environment where you don't have access to the general internet. How do you pull in your package dependencies? How do you get them updated? Well, <laughs> what do you do? You do something that's incredibly slow, right? You submit a package to get approved. It goes to some queue. You generate a lot of paperwork around it. And by the time you're done six months later, an update has arrived. You're ready to go and start all over again. You're doing a lot of rinse and repeat and a lot of manual paperwork. So the question becomes, is there a better way? Um, can you automate the patching, the compliance, and the delivery of those build dependencies into a strict environment? Can this be done using existing tooling, right? Um, how many of us write custom scripts all the time for a one-off project, right? Is there a way to do this where you have a common workflow for multiple teams through a single data flow, right? If you have 15 teams working in a strict environment, you don't want them all doing their own data flow, synchronizing their own disks into that environment. And often, you're not just going to pull things out from the general internet. You want to collect things from trusted sources within an intranet or something like Iron Bank or some other trusted um, repository. Well, that's where Hopper comes in. So we're going to be talking a lot about Hopper. It's an open source project that we've been working on. Um, and it's a framework for defining, validating, and transferring build dependencies between environments using software build materials, right? So for us, we are heavy users of Cyclone DX. You've heard a lot this week probably about the executive order. Well, if we're already going to produce them, we're already going to make them, can they be the thing that we use to, to move stuff between environments and maybe package it up to give to a customer? Hopper provides this well-defined solution, um, and it's repeatable, right? We have SBOMs. Ideally, they're going to be semantically released. And then you can reprocess things over and over again to pull stuff in. So I'm going to talk a lot about Hopper, but there's two other projects that are pretty key to this all working. One of them is Renovate. So if you're not using Renovate or Dependabot, highly recommended, right? You have tooling out there that will look at your upstream dependencies and tell you when something's changed and there's a patch or um, a minor or a major update. We in-house use Renovate pretty extensively. Renovate is excellent for us because it does that. It goes out and looks at Python packages, may go look out maybe in Gradle, go, doesn't really matter. And it's easily configurable for internal sources too. So you can use Renovate to look at other projects and say, GitLab instance, they have uh, that's private. We also use semantically release for pretty much everything. So how are you versioning all your stuff? Well, semantic version is probably the best way to do it. Um, and semantic release is really nice for us. It ties in really well to our pipelines. So at the very beginning, it will kind of parse through all your commit messages and look for conventional commits. So you say like fix, colon, whatever, feature, colon, whatever. For, for patches and for minor updates. And then those are used as part of the semantic versioning. All right, well, let's take that and pair those two together, right? You're probably not handwriting SBOMs. You're probably taking, again, I'm going to use Python, but I can require a text file, and using maybe the Cyclone DX tooling and generating an SBOM around it. 
Well, let's semantically release that, and that can be consumed as your packaging format, bringing your build dependencies across that environment. So if I'm a team, and I'm working in a classified environment, and I need up-to-date versions of certain packages, well, I can use these two tools to figure out when things change and define what is my standard for that transfer uh, for the next update. So what, is, what does this allow us to do? It's kind of like that multi-team single process. So I'm going to show a couple diagrams to kind of walk through this concept a little bit, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jared, who's going to walk through a demo. Um, the big thing here, right, is if you have these SBOMs that different teams are producing, they're all being updated with Renovate, and then they're semantically released, you can build on that and create a tree inclusion process where you have like a master project that then references the, the inputs from these other teams that could reference other teams. And you begin to have a generic process for bundling things together and be included in bigger deliverables. So I'm gonna jump over to this diagram. So I have three diagrams here. This first one just kind of talking data flow. I don't think this is gonna be shocking to anyone if you've worked in this realm. Um, we typically break things into kind of like three, three areas. You have general internet, where you might have Docker Hub, Iron Bank, Quay, other sources of container images, and then you have multiple uh, package repositories. You might also have stuff from GitHub, especially if you're working a lot with Go, or Helm charts that are coming from, from GitLab or, or GitHub. Um, we pull things into internet instances for proxy caching, and that's where we do a lot of our scanning. We look for security and other types of vulnerability information there. And then we probably are going to trans things, transfer things across uh, a diode using a GitLab pipeline. So for us, if we're talking about teams defining SBOMs, well, they're going to be pulling their stuff from internal references and using that SBOM to define the what needs to be transferred. I think most of us probably still do a decent amount of sneaker netting, but if you want to, you can use sneaker net. SRE buckets, CDS, or you know, just data diodes. On the other side, you got this package, and you gotta do something with it. Well, what are you gonna do? You wanna probably transfer stuff, the container images to whatever your secure container registry is, the packages for Python or whatever, to your package repository, and then um, mirror uh, and merge any, any Git repo changes. Hopper, as that thing that runs in a pipeline, kinda has a couple inputs and a couple outputs. So I talked a lot about Cyclone DX SBOMs as the thing that defines the, the what to transfer, but that doesn't really help us in our situation, right? If I just give you an SBOM and it has a whole bunch of pearls, well, you need to know where to pull things from. Um, you may not want to pull things out from the general internet. You may want those internal raw repositories or container registries. That's where manifest comes in. And that's our definition of the where to pull from. So we say for a specific package URL type, I'm going to say, you know, PyPI again, pull from this internal Nexus instance. If you are using a Docker uh, Perl type, pull from this ordered list of container registries. That allows you to have an enterprise registry first and maybe a team-specific registry second. And it will cascade and what it, where it goes out and finds things. Next up, you can kind of see here in the middle, we have our package collectors. So we have those SBOMs and those manifests. Our input there is go out and find all this stuff, right? And we've written a plugin architecture here where you can have our base core plugins that there are about eight, I think, uh, Perl types. And you can add other ones for anything custom that you want. Once you bring it in, you can augment and filter that SBOM. All right, so one of the big problems we have often seen here is you have an SBOM and it's lacking additional metadata that you may need for uh, security approval. All right, you may want to have CVE scoring. That's what HopperCop does. We're looking at other things like scorecard uh, quality, all things that you may want to give off to an authorizing official. At the other end is a series of plugins. We have two out of the gate. There's others that could be easily added. Um, and one of them produces a giant tar file of what those things are that need to be transferred. The other one would be a Nexus instance. So you can have Nexus instance that spun up, and then you can transfer all the stuff that you've defined in SBOM into that Nexus instance, snapshot it as a container image, and move that to the high side. We have it feature flagged. But as part of this, you can generate in total attestations for each stage and all the files that have been collected and processed as part of it. We also snapshot the SBOM as it changes over this period of time, so you can see exactly what stage and where it was modified. And again, just to kind of, you know, I guess bring it home again, um, our primary goal here is one 
data flow, one security team, right? And multiple teams have their own ability to specify what they want, right? You have the control as a team member to say, hey, I need to update these four packages. I don't need to go talk to someone to get permission to do that, right? You just add to your SBOM, you say where to find it. The security team then has dependencies on those, and Jared will show you how that, that works. They can then bring that stuff in, do additional testing if need be, and then bring it over to the high side. Also, because we allow you to specify a set of uh, places that go find things in a manifest, you can easily override it as a security team and say, well, I'm actually gonna only allow you to pull things from these four types of package repositories and these container registries. So the hurdles here, right, and what are we solving? Well, often you see incomplete SBOMs. They don't have all the information you need for security approval. And we're looking at how we use augmenters and filters to, uh, I guess, add additional metadata there that someone would want to see for that security approval. Because it is a plugin architecture, if you wanted to generate additional documentation in, say, I don't know, Excel, because no one's here ever done that, uh, you possibly could do that, right? It's a plugin architecture, you have an SBOM, we provide a model for which to, to parse through that, and then you can just uh, generate your own documentation. And we do that with HTML reports. Um, that allows you to work with the legacy approval process. If you have an AO who isn't there yet, who would accept, say, a policy of some type to bring things into a classified network. The ability to restrict where things come from, right? And then the ability to detect where things change. Renovate really does that for us. We don't handle it with an opper, but it's a great tool to detect things, and as things get detected, generate that next semantic release using, um, using semantic release, that then kicks off another pipeline. So as things change downstream in SBOMs, they all percolate up to the security team that can then do that transfer automatically. Um, and then lastly, this allows us to have a one-way delivery into an environment, but a clear understanding of what's in that environment from an SBOM perspective. So you can do it all on the low side. So we talked a lot about these advantages, but I'm just gonna point out a couple of them. The biggest one being is, hey, we have Cyclone DX S bombs for everything that's in that, that, in that environment. Well, that allows us to work with a lot of existing tooling out there. I'm gonna say one of my favorite, dependency track, right? So if you wanna track dependency, or you wanna track issues that may arise in a secure environment on a low side, you now have this, you know, this uh, inventory of everything as an S bomb. And that can be then tracked in dependency track. If you want to use Hopper, you can augment it with additional metadata, like VexCV. Um, and then, ideally sometime down the road, the validation of attestations and everything else for all those components that you bring in. All of this is done in a pipeline. There's no meaningful interaction. All right, so I'm gonna show, well, I'm not gonna show a demo. Jared's gonna show a demo. But here's some of the, the key features that, and things to look for as we, we piece through this. Um, we're gonna talk a little about the dependencies between teams and a security team, which is kind of showing how you know, there's a tree structure. Um, we'll probably briefly show an attestated, sorry, an attestated, a CVE uh, report with HopperCop. Um, and then we'll show a little bit about attestation creation and specifically a layout file for that. So you have a way of verifying um, all the, the in total links. And lastly, we'll just show the, the bundle. Um, this demo does work in Gitpod. So if you scan the QR code, uh, you can actually pull it up yourself and uh, play with it. And that's how we're gonna demo it, is in Gitpod. Uh, so you're welcome to play with this at, at your leisure. All right. There you go. Cool. All right, so we're in, we're in Gitpod here. Um, what we did with, with Gitpod is we put the, the, the commands right here on the top. So that's what I'm gonna run here and then I will walk through some of what these pieces are doing. Allow that to paste, so that's gonna kick off. Okay, so what we're doing here is it, from top to bottom, um, we're generating a, in total, we're doing a product key and a functionary key. Um, we're then generating a layout um, and the layout is over here. And we generate that layout based on the transfer instructions as well as the SBOM. So we'd say, this is what we expect to see. 
um, and it gets generated based off of that command, um, and then in total uses that to go and verify that what we thought we were going to do actually happened over the course of that uh, operation. Um, we then run the bundle, which is what it's doing right now. It's collecting our dependencies. Um, it's gonna run a hopper cop on them, which does gymnasium and trivi um, and gripe and scans it. And then uh, we get our reports and a tar. Um, so you can see it kicking off right down there. Um, Ian talks a lot about the multi-team concept. And really that is defined in our, let's grab this and expand this out a little bit. Uh, it's defined in our manifest. So our manifest, uh, we've got some metadata up there, but really what we're looking here is we're saying grab a local SBOM. That's other stuff we wanna augment here. And then you can see in here that our includes are referencing two different external, these guys here, two different external teams that have manifests that also define that team or that project's dependencies and lists and whatever they wanna bundle up there. Um, and what we're able to do there then is say, go get, grab from this team, we expect it in this format, we expect an SBOM with it, give us our references, pull that all together, and then let us basically zip it up and package it up so that we have an artifact to deliver. Um, down here with the repositories that you see, this is really our, our mechanism for enforcing the location that you're getting your dependencies from. Um, at the end of the day, within an organization, there are some sources that you trust um, or have higher faith in versus um, allowing kind of just that free form, um, which you can with a no, adding a no strict flag, but by default, you needed to find those, those repositories so that we can be very clear about what our sources were when we gathered them. Um, let's bring that back up. We'll go here real quick. We're gonna look at um, the transfer. The transfer.yaml is really what, what Intoto used earlier to kind of understand what was gonna happen. Um, in here we have stages. Um, for example, we have a collect, um, a report, and a bundle, but those names can, they're, they're free form, um, just as long as the structure maintains the same, but inside we define, in the collect, we wanna run our Git plugin, our raw plugin, and our Docker plugin. We're gonna go and generate our report um, with HopperCop, and these are the different uh, scanners that we wanna enable. And then down here at the bottom, pretty simple, you know, where's my tar file going, what, what, what should it be named, and so forth. Coming back up here, you can see that we went through, we ran, we collected, we successfully passed, which is always a good thing for a demo. Um, and in grand total, we, we then look at the layout, we do a validation and verification, and we ensure that what we thought was gonna happen, happened. All right, anything else in here? We've gotta renovate, you can see the links in here, right, we've got generation, our link data created. We use that then to go down and check to make sure that pieces went where they should be. So, in total, it's pretty cool. Um, what else do we have? I think that's it. Yeah, if you want to hold that bomb quickly. Yeah. Where's that guy? Oh, here. This guy. All right, you can see our SBOM coming from HopperCop with our references. Could have been formatted better. But. <laughs> cool. Do we want to pull the tarp off? Yeah, let's do that. All right, and here you can see, looking inside that tar object, Grabbed all our different pieces from Git. Let's see, we got our S bombs in there. We've got our consolidated and delivered. So there's two different S bombs that get put into the tar file. Right now they're going to be identical, but on day two operations where we want to go and send a delta, that is where the consolidated looks at what the original was, and then the delivered is the pieces that we, we the deltas, right? We only want to bring over that smaller subset instead of the entire package, especially when the deliverables can be pretty big. And that's it, okay. Make sure our notes don't show. There we go, all right. 
All right, so looking ahead. Um, do you need to go back to that QR code? Give you a chance to go and grab that. All right. Um, looking forward, um, we're, we're working on developing for, for Hopper itself, we're working on developing a unified report generation um, to allow multiple plugins to kind of define what kind of reports uh, should be part of the generation and part of that bundle. Um, we're looking at expanding component validation, um, doing signature validation with ReCore, uh, further attestation validation with Intoto, um, as well as some additional uh, component validation between uh, during the collect phases to, to verify the SHAs and ensure that the pieces that we got are what we expected within the SBOM. Um, looking at uh, doing an additional plugin with OpenSSF scorecard. Um, that data is really cool. It'd be nice to go and be able to package that in as a report um, to provide an ISO or an ISOM or security representative um, on the other side. Um, we're currently in progress. We're looking at uh, unbundling and installation of disconnected networks. Those can be a little bit challenging because those networks kind of also define where pieces go. They don't always go to the more traditional locations and they're often diversified across those systems. Um, and then looking at doing addition and implementation with, as we go forward with some of the work with, uh, it's the SBOM with the verified, uh, verifiable SBOM with the token. You gotta say it correctly. It's the bomb. It's the bomb. <laughs> Some of our inspirations, SigStore, pretty strong. Um, we, a lot of their tools are awesome, and we really enjoy working with those pieces. Um, uh, Cyclone DX, uh, part of the working group with them, uh, the industry working group. Um, they've been a great uh, community to engage with, as well as in Toto. Um, and then other cool projects in this area, uh, Zarf with Defense Unicorns, and then uh, Witness um, with TestifySec. Those are also great tools to go check out. And with that, any questions? Go in the back. Given the fact uh, that, uh, you know, like how would you build the mechanism where you want to detect that if you, a particular SBOM is approved, right? You know, like after three months or nine months. Uh, so there is a mechanism that you can add into the Hopper SBOM as well as the Hopper. So every kind of like, how can you detect those tracks, right? Like if someone wants to update them or somehow. So that's that. So the question is like, how do you update SBOMs? How do you track those updates? Yeah, just to catch like, Sure. So we're not checking if SBOMs are stale in any way. Um, but what we, we kind of encourage and what we're doing in-house is using Renovate quite heavily, right? So if, if there are dependency updates that should happen, then we would assume that a new SBOM gets generated, and then that's what would be used to, to generate a new pipeline and push a new bundle across into our environment. Um, we haven't really considered if there's a need to say, okay, this SBOM is way too old, maybe we need to filter it out. But it's a great idea. And I think that's a call to action here. Like, this is a very extensible Python code base that's all plugin, um, and we allow you to customize and build your own plugins very, very easily. And that would be a great, good community addition. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't experienced that problem yet, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. I think the bigger problem that we have right now is discoverability. With the open uh, SSF scorecard being path-based and assuming that you're on GitHub, how do you, for us, since Perl is our biggest identifier, how do you transition from Perl to the scorecard URLs? It's been uh, tough to find. Also, when calculating, so are you considering to calculate the score for transitive dependencies as well, or just address the So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Um, 
I think we are right now assuming that you are defining your transitive dependencies, and we're not going to discover them for you. Granted, again, Hopper could facilitate the addition of your transitive dependencies. Um, I'm not sure if it's in this example, but we typically, like if you're using Python or something else, we force those transitive dependencies into the SBOM so that they're tracked as part of the, the bundle part of the deliverable. Across. Yeah. So we, we, we assume that you're gonna figure out your transitive dependencies and include them in the bomb. And most tooling does allow you to capture that, right? It allows you to, to snapshot that. Okay. 